In section 10.6, we're going to talk about samples and populations. So let's start by talking about what a population and what a sample is. A population is an entire group of people or objects. A sample is a part of the population. You can use a sample to make an inference or conclusion about a population. So now let's talk about an unbiased sample. An unbiased sample is a representative of a population. It is selected at random and is large enough to provide accurate data. A biased sample is not a representative of a population. One or more parts of a population are favored by others. So you've, I'm sure, heard people say things like, so-and-so is biased about something or unbiased. A biased decision or a biased sample means you're trying to skew something because you're in favor or against something. So in example one, we have to identify an unbiased sample. So you want to estimate the number of students in a high school who ride the school bus. Which sample is unbiased? So this is where it gets, uh, this, it, this is tricky. So just look at this. Can you take any of these out because it's biased? A says four students in a hallway. B says all students in a marching band. C says 50 seniors at random. And D, 100 students at lunch chosen at random. Well, choice A is not large enough. Remember, you need a pretty good sized um, representative of a population. It's biased because it's, it's not large enough. So what about choice B? All students in the marching band. Choice B would actually be biased because you chose all people in the marching band. You have to select something at random. So choice B is not selected at random. What about choice C? Choice C says 50 seniors at random. You've randomly chosen 50 seniors. The problem is choice C is not representative of the population because seniors are more likely to drive to school than other students. So it's not unbiased. C is about seniors. C chooses seniors and that's biased. You are like picking seniors rather than picking from a whole student body. D, 100 students at random during lunch. That would be a representative of the population because you've selected random a number of people, which could be freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors, all at random, and it's large enough. So your correct answer would be D. Example number two. You want to know how the residents of your town feel about adding a new stop sign. Determine whether each conclusion is valid. So in A, you survey the 20 residents who live closest to the new sign. 15 support the sign, 5 do not. So you conclude that 75% of residents of your town support the new sign. Would that be valid? Why not? Well, if you're looking at it, think about it. If you're going to actually poll people who live closest to the sign. Don't you think that they're most likely going to support the sign? Or in the very least, they're going to be biased either for or against it. So the sample that is chosen is not representing the population because residents who live close to the sign are more likely to be biased. So the sample is biased. The conclusion is not valid. What about part B? You survey 100 residents at random. 40 support the new sign and 60 do not. So you conclude that 40% of the residents of your town support the new sign. The sample is a good representation because it's selected at random and it's large enough to provide accurate data. So the sample is unbiased and the conclusion is valid. In example three, making predictions. 
You ask 75 randomly chosen students how many movies they watch each week. There are 1,200 students in the school. Predict the number N of students in the school who watch one movie each week. Now the sample is a good representation of the population, selected at random, and large enough to provide accurate data. So the sample is unbiased, and we can use it to make a prediction. So we want to know one movie. So how many watch one movie? Well, we know 21 students out of, we add 21, 30, and 24. That gives us 75 total students that were surveyed. So 21 out of 75 would equal N, the number of students out of 1,200. I cross multiply, 75N equals 25,200. So N would be about 336. So approximately or about 336 students would watch one movie each week.